Okay, so the point to this short video, guys, is um, to encourage people, amateurs like myself, to not be intimidated by um, ignition system traces, ignition scopes, right? Um, a great deal of information can actually be gleaned from a trace like this. So this is just a little snapshot of a, we test it, I've, I've actually got here to demonstrate um, what's going on with the, what, what is actually this all about guys. And again, um, just my own experience when I first kind of took an interest in automotive mechanics, you know, you get to the section of the textbook where they show you something like this and you lose interest. Why? Because you think, oh man, this is, this is, this is too heavy duty for me. This requires expensive equipment. This is, this is too much. And you flip to the next section and get back to carburetors or whatever as you're interested in, right? <laughs> um, that perhaps is not the case with everybody, but it certainly was the case with me. <clears throat> so let's just take 30 seconds and just look at this trace and what it's actually telling us here, guys, right? So this is a typical trace that actually shows us what's going on with respect to the coil charging and discharge of uh, this happens to be a coil on plug assembly here, guys. I've just go again for testing purposes. But what's going on with respect to charging the coil when it discharges and what the spark um, lane burn time actually looks like, right? So I've, I explained this before with another scope I have, the Handtech. You don't need a modus to actually do it. Um, most scopes that can tolerate ignition noise, um, you can get a similar trace to this. My Handtech. Uh, 2C42, my portable, I can get a very similar trace to this. Not so much with my 1008 because uh, its software cannot tolerate the uh, high tension noise spikes and just locks the system up. It's extremely frustrating. But back to the trace here, right? So not shown is a, a coil and plug assembly typically has three wires, guys, right? A, a, a power and a ground, as you may expect, and a, and a trigger. And the trigger is actually what what actually uh, controls the circuit effectively with respect to charging and discharging the coil. So not shown again is the, is the trigger uh, pulse, but if we did see it, then we'd have the trigger pulse actually right in this area right here. And it actually affects the dwell time or how long the coil is actually gonna charge for. So at this point in time, the trigger uh, uh, pulse has appeared for us. It effectively turns the uh, circuit on that charges the coil, the magnetic field builds in the coil. Obviously, it'll get to a point of saturation where it's really pointless. You're just generating heat, not so much magnetic field if you continue to charge it. And uh, and then, of course, the trigger disappears and it will fire the plug. So this is the firing line. You guys might remember this from your high school law of days where you have a firing line and a spark line and they're basically inversely proportional to one another. The lower the, the firing line, the wider the spark line, right? So... And then we have, so we have the spark line, how long the burn time actually is from here to here. And these oscillations are typically just the, the residual energy just dissipating within the system when the, when the spark goes out effectively, right? And then the whole, the whole cycle obviously repeats. This is just one firing event. So it sounds like a lot, but it's really not that much. You break it down into certain sections and it's kind of comprehensible, I think, for most guys that are, you know, somewhat familiar with automotive systems i think it's not too bad at all so and you think well that's fine but how useful can it be for me you know just a weekender very useful very useful indeed and i'll give you a simple example why so let me put this back in this is again just a freeze frame guys because if the system's operating the buzz of the uh, uh, the plug is a wee bit annoying but let's let's run the scope again so now it's waiting for an event to across the trigger threshold so let me just turn on my signal generator here, which generates the pulses in order to turn the uh, system on, right? I've got it just powered by a 12 volt battery here. So I've got a 50 hertz trigger at 2% duty cycle, very narrow, very narrow uh, pulse in order to just trigger the uh, system. And there's, there's an active sweep, if you will, right? An active trace. So I just wanted to make the point that very useful for a diagnostic tool, guys, right? Even, again, even weekenders can actually make good use of something like this because it's not really that difficult to understand some basics right and i'll show you a, a common example a typical example now clearly in, a, in an ignition system the plug gap is a major concern did something strike the electrode is it carbon buildup 
what's going on? You can see the plug actually firing there, right? So what's going on with this is going to have a huge impact on the performance of that particular cylinder, right? Uh, and it can go either way. The gap can get too narrow, the gap can get too wide. And the width, of, the height of this firing line and the width of the spark line here, or the burn time, is going to be reflective of that gap. And a few other things. There's other things that can affect that. I'm not claiming this is exclusively uh, the case with uh, the gap, but it certainly is a major consideration, right? So I've got my feeler gauge here. It's a 20... 20 thou gauge, I think? Yeah, 25, 25 thou. So what I'm going to do is effectively narrow this gap as grounding, guys, so I'm not going to get a shot for it. So all I'm going to do is effectively narrow the gap there. So can you see the plug still firing, but in a much narrower gap? So let's see how that's going to be reflected on the trace. I can't show you both views at the same time here, guys. So let me just put the, put the uh, feeler gauge in place. And you can see that is a major difference, right? The firing line has dropped way down and the spark line has become much wider, the burn time. You can see a big difference there, right? And you think, okay, well that's fine, right? But what good does that do me? Let me just turn this off. Let me just freeze the frame again here, guys. So I don't need to speak over the, the system actually firing. Um, typically, in an automotive system, <laughs> you're going to have more than one cylinder, right? You know, you're going to have more than two cylinders, likely, unless you're dealing with a Citroën de Chevaux or something like that, but it's unlikely. You're going to have multiple cylinders, and you're going to have you're going to have an opportunity to use one of the known good cylinders as a reference, right? Or look at them all, take your typical, and then assume that to be the average. That might be a wee bit of a risk in that, but you get the point. You can, you can get a good idea what's what's typical and what's non-typical and just make the comparison so if this was typical when we seen the filler gauge in place clearly that's non-typical it may be worth pulling the plug taking a look is there something going on swapping the coils whatever the case may be right in order to isolate it so the whole point to this video is guys is this is a great diagnostic tool and if you're anything like me um you know just a weekender just a guy who reads stuff in textbooks doesn't have a guru that teaches him this stuff um, it can be intimidating when you, when you first look at it and you tend, like I said, ah, I'd flip the page and go back to it, but years into it, as I get older now, I think, well, I'll revisit things that are a wee bit intimidating and see if I can wrap my head around it. This is no difficult. Believe me, if I can make some sense of it, you certainly can as well, right? And again, you don't need any particular scope, just ones that are not prone to lock up with high tension noise and, uh, you can use this to great advantage. So hope that made some sense, guys. I'll be talking a wee bit more about this in the future because there's a it's, it's a mine that you can dig quite deep. That's it, boys. Cheers.